let's bring up first the MX devices. These are routers and next gen firewalls. So to help decide which model's the best fit for your use case, we're using this publicly available Meraki MX sizing guide. I'll have this in the description. So at a high level, you've got your desktop form factor, your MX64s, MX67s, MX68s, and even your MX75s. The models with W have built-in wireless access points and the models with C have built-in cellular. Worth noting with the MX68 devices, there's two PoE ports built in. So this means on a branch location, you can also run say a PoE camera and a PoE access point as well in a really clean, simple setup. Now in the mid tier, you have your MX75s, 84s, 85s, 95s, 100s and 105s. These now jump up to a rack based form factor or one RU. Then you jump up to your really serious devices, your MX250s, your MX450s. Finally, you've got the VMX series. These are virtual appliances that run in GCP, Alibaba Cloud, Azure, or AWS. These are designed for routing in, between, and to cloud-based workloads. Scrolling through, we can see the network performance benchmarks. The two most useful bits of information here are the number of site-to-site -site VPN tunnels and also the stateful firewall throughput. Finally, in scrolling down, we can get an idea of how many end-user devices each MX type can handle, noting these are not hard numbers. On the smaller end, we have the MX64 with up to 50 end user devices, ranging all the way up to the MX450 with up to 10,000 end user devices and everything in between. All right, moving away from layer three with MX to layer two with MS, these are switches that can handle up to 10,000 virtual ports, multi gigabit ethernet plus fiber and virtual stacking. Jumping into the MS data sheet, we can actually have a quick look at all the different models. Starting with some of the low end access switches, these include the MS120 8 port switch, the MS120 24 and 48 port switches, and even up to the MS125. Noting the P, LP, and FP models are all PoE, and these are the base level switches with Meraki. All right, as you scroll down further, you can jump up to the more capable switches, your MS210s, MS225s, and your MS250s. You now get more stacking ports, so these can be physically stacked, not just virtually stacked. You can have more PoE ports and obviously far more power, and these take up one rack unit in most cases. Then we scroll down to the MS350, MS355, and MS390 switches. These are getting to the most powerful end of the access layer switches. These have modular power supply units. They can do things like warm spare configurations where you need to license two switches, but if one was to fail, the second one would take over automatically. And they also have the highest power output as a result of having that modular power. All right, finally, Meraki aggregation switches. So these move away from the access layer to the aggregation layer. Really, really high throughput, but obviously designed to be used in conjunction with some amount of access type switches. So these are designed more for your campus style deployments. You're looking at multi-bit throughput and SFP ports. All right, jumping back to our presentation here, now we look at the MG 4G wireless gateways. So looking at the MG devices, these are all 4G devices, no 5G devices at this point. MG 21 and 21E, E just stands for external antenna, so they've got a higher gain for poor coverage areas. Their CAT6 LTE, that's 300 megabits per second download and 50 megabits per second upload. For the MG41 and MG41E, that's CAT18 LTE, that's 1.2 gigabits per second download and 211 megabits per second upload. So huge, huge throughput there, bearing in mind that's completely wireless over the 4G network and taking advantage of the fact 4G works on the kilometer scale, not meter scale. So if you're looking at 5G, you're typically constrained by having to be quite close to a tower, whereas 4G, you can be a lot further away. So this is great for quite remote deployments or anywhere we need a really robust either backup or even a secondary WAN link. Next up is Meraki's MI product, that's Meraki Insight. This is an optional add-on for any MX device like I already covered and gives some advanced analytics. I've got a separate video on this card here to Meraki Insight. Moving on, we look at the MR series of Meraki's wireless access points. Jumping into the MR family data sheet, we first see the newest models, the Wi-Fi 6E models. E stands for extended, and it basically means that not only do they use the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz spectrum, they now also use part of the 6 gigahertz spectrum. So a huge shift in what's possible with Wi-Fi 6E. The idea being this will complement 5G when you're at rest at say an office, and then when you're out and about, 5G picks up the slack there and gives you that seamless user experience. 
huge improvements in terms of throughput. This idea you can now break up the actual spectrum to work more like a switch than like a hub as traditional access points used to do. And this means many, many more devices can be simultaneously communicated with than has been possible in the past. Moving on, we've got the indoor Wi-Fi 6 APs, not quite as capable as the 6E, but still very, very capable. These are the entry level ones here, MR28, MR36, and the MR36H, H stands for hotel. It's a small four port switch as well, built in, designed for individual rooms in a hotel having their own AP. Next up, we have the more advanced indoor Wi-Fi 6 APs, the MR44, the MR46, MR46E, and the MR56. The MR46E, E stands for external antenna, Great use for when you've got really, really poor coverage or need a high gain antenna. Finally, we have the outdoor Wi-Fi 6 APs. You can see here they've got external antennas on the MR76 and MR86. If you have a more simple outdoor deployment, the MR78 is also a great fit. All IP67 rated, and they're also a great fit for really grungy, dirty environments such as warehouses where the APs do get a little bit knocked around. Next up, we have Meraki SM, that's Systems Manager, Meraki's mobile device management software. This works on Android, iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, macOS, Windows, and Chrome OS. Moving back to hardware, we then have Meraki's MV Series smart cameras. The simplest way to understand Meraki's cameras is just to identify that there's basically indoor models and then outdoor ruggedized versions of those. So starting with the indoor models, you have an MV2, which is designed for streaming. You then jump up to the MV12, which has onboard memory. N stands for narrow field of view, W for wide angle field of view, E has reduced internal memory. So they're very, very simple to set up, just point and shoot, no real lens you have to play around with. You then jump up to the MV22 and MV22X, up to three times optical zoom on board, and the X model also improves the resolution, jumping up from 1080p to a four megapixel onboard sensor. You then also have the MV32, that indoor fisheye lens, Great use case for where you have a wide open space you want to cover from multiple angles, but you don't have four or five different cameras pointing in different directions. Now they're the indoor cameras. Now we jump up to the outdoor cameras. So equivalent to the MV12, those simple point and shoot cameras are the MV63 and 63X cameras. Equivalent to the MV22 and MV22X indoor cameras are the MV72 and 72X outdoor cameras. Finally, the MV32 is equivalent to the MV93 outdoor and the MV93X outdoor cameras, those fisheye lenses. Now the only camera on top of that is the MV52. That's an outdoor telephoto lens designed where you've got a long standoff distance between you and the target you're trying to film. Great use case with car parks, the camera itself might be mounted to a building, say 50, 100 meters away, but you still wanna see what's going on in that car park. So hopefully that's helped. All these cameras record and encrypt locally onto themselves, and then you can access them anywhere via the Meraki dashboard. There is also Meraki's vision portal, which is a portal designed exclusively for view only. So if you've got a security personnel who just needs to view footage or go back and has uh, an ability to search by motion in an area, great, great fit without having to give them access to your full Meraki dashboard. So Meraki smart cameras are called smart cameras as well because they have REST APIs attached to them. So this means you can use them for things like number plate recognition, say opening a boom gate on arrival of a certain type of truck or vehicle, or even you know identifying a barcode on a package. Anything that can be analyzed visually, the APIs on the back end of these smart cameras can help achieve what you're after there. So far, far more than just security. Next, we have Meraki's MT IoT sensors. These are designed to capture environmental data and feed that back into the dashboard. Looking at the models here, there's the MT10, that's temperature and humidity, it senses. There's then the MT11 that can do temperature with an external probe. So say you've got a cool room, you can then run that probe into the cool room and not have to have the actual sensor itself in the cool room. You then have the MT12, which is a water leak detection. So an actual cable that if water touches will notify you. So a great use case is say a server room with an air conditioning unit. You don't want that air conditioning unit to be dumping a lot of moisture onto the floor, for example. MT14, air quality sensor. So you can look at total volatile organic compounds, temperature, humidity, and noise as well. MT20 is open close. So if you've got say emergency exits you need to verify are closed, it can measure that or also trigger an alert if say they are opened. Finally, there's the MT30, a smart button that can trigger any API call. So say you wanna do a capture on one of Meraki's cameras, you could use that button to trigger that. All right, second to last are the Z series teleworker devices. Think of these as a cut down MX, not quite as capable, but still great devices for remote workers. 
and then very, very finally, your VMX. Now we have touched on these earlier. They're designed for routing in between clouds to the cloud and vice versa, and are actually virtual appliances that run in Alibaba Cloud, GCP, Azure, or AWS. And that's it. That's a quick overview of the entire Meraki ecosystem. Some updates there for 2023. Hope you got some value. Take care. Bye.